Uh, so what we have is that for B2, C2, and N2, the, um, the, uh, the sigma two, the, the 2s and the 2px orbitals are closer together in energy, so they can mix a little more. Whereas for the O2, F2, and NE2, the 2s and the 2px orbitals are not very close in energy, so they don't mix very much. And so this is the, the unmixed energy levels. You have your sigma uh, here, you have your, your sigma 2s orbitals down here, and your sigma 2p and your pi 2p orbitals up here. The, the sigma 2p are lower in energy because they have um, more overlap um, than the pi 2p. So you'll, you'll have more bonding and greater antibonding because of the greater overlap. Because if, it's, if they're opposite phase, then more overlap means higher energy. Um, okay, but if you have mixing between the 2s and 2p, then uh, you have a set, yeah, so the, here, the, the pi orbitals from the 2py and 2px, they stay the same um, across. They, they, but the, the sigma orbitals from both the 2s and the 2px combined, and because they're combining more, you get a wider range of low and high energies. When they combine, you've got more orbitals into the mix, so there's more potentially low energies and more potentially high energies. So the sigma 2s get lower in energy and the sigma 2p gets higher in energy. This is all very hand wavy, I realize. Um, so like the exact why it goes up and why it goes down uh, is, is, is obviously you need to do careful calculations to get those energy levels right. Uh, the reason though is important, and that is for um, B2, C2, N2, there is more 2S, uh, 2S, 2PX mixing. And so um, these, this is where it comes into play that the, the pi 2P orbitals are lower in energy than the sigma 2p, whereas we have less, less mixing, uh, O2, F2, NE2, you get what you would generally expect was that the sigma 2p would be lower in energy than the pi 2p. Basically, you just have to remember this because obviously you're not going to solve Schrodinger's equation for, uh, um, for homonuclear diatomic molecules in, a, in an exam. This is something that, that you just, um, you remember the patterns. Okay. So let's actually, let's go through and just practice filling these all up and, and look at the bond orders and the bonds that come out. Okay, so these are the molecular orbital diagrams. You notice for the first three, B2, C2, N2, I've got the pi 2p lower in energy and the sigma 2p higher in energy. Whereas for O2, F2, NE2, uh, it's reversed. Uh, all the sigma, the, the sigma, the, the, the sigma 2p is lower in energy than the pi 2p. And remember the pi 2p's, those are all both the same energy. Okay, so um, let's start with boron. Well, how many electron, valence electrons do we have? Boron has three, so um, it's going to be three plus six electrons, and we can just go through and do this all now. Eight electrons here, 10 electrons, 12 valence electrons, 14 valence electrons, 16 valence electrons. All right, let's go and fill them in. So Hund's rule still applies. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're filling those degenerate. So B2 is going to be paramagnetic because it has two unpaired spins. Uh, if the energy levels were reversed, it wouldn't be. Carbon, we've got eight atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so we filled up through a pi to B, it's diamagnetic. Uh, next with nitrogen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, uh, and then it, yeah, so we're just filling up uh, with oxygen. Now we've got 12. Uh, actually, no, let's go back and look at the bond order. So what is the bond order uh, for boron two? Well, we've got how many bonding orbitals? Remember, it's not just the energy that's determined, that determines if it's bonding or antibonding, it's the energy relative to the atomic orbitals that it came from, because then you gain energy by getting the atoms close together and, and sharing electrons. So we have four in bonding orbitals, two in antibonding, over two, excuse me, over two equals one, of bonding order one, the bond energy ends up being 290 kcals per mole, the bond length about 159. There's no way to calculate that. I'm just looking it up off the tables. So um, for carbon, we have six in bonding minus two in antibonding divided by two. So that would be a bond order of two. So carbon two would have carbon double bond, and then uh, they would each have two lone pairs. The bond energy is um, 
uh, bond energy is uh, 620. So it's the, the double bond, right? Bond order two, it's stronger. And the bond length is going to be shorter, 131. Nitrogen, N2, uh, we have in bonding orbitals, uh, eight electrons in bonding orbitals, two in antibonding, divide by two equals two. And so we have 946. Uh, and it's length is very short. Its length is only 110 picometers. Okay, so now let's move on to oxygen. So uh, we have 12 electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Note now that um, the, uh, the order of the sigma 2p and the pi 2p is switched, so that sigma 2p is higher in energy. Uh, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And so oxygen is going to be paramagnetic. And now we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight electrons in bonding orbitals, but four have been forced into antibonding orbitals. And so that has bond order two. Ox O2, you know, has from other bonding theories, has a double bond, 498 kilojoules per mole, has a length of 121 picometers. F2, keep on filling, keep on filling. Uh, Uh, and okay, so now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen electrons. We have eight in bonding orbitals, six in antibonding orbitals, divided by two, uh, bond order of one, 159 kilojoules per mole, and a longer length of 143. Uh, neon, one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We have eight electrons in uh, bonding orbitals, eight in anti-bonding orbitals divided by two, zero, bond order of zero. And there's no observed numbers because it's not at all stable uh, with respect to the isolated atoms, has bonding order of zero. There's no additional energy gained by moving next to each other. Yeah. So that is how we deal with the group two, um, the, the simplest group, uh, um, sorry, N equals two. The hard part is creating the molecular orbitals and knowing their relative energy levels, filling them up is just, just old Hans rule. The same way you fill up the atomic orbitals, you fill up the molecular orbitals from the bottom.